Tax time's just around the corner, so we are tuning in live to get all of your questions answered about tax time, how to prepare for tax time for employees, self-employed, and property investors. Hello and welcome to Rise High TV. I'm Marissa from Rise High, and today I'm joined by Amanda Watchman from Rit, Rit Watchman and Associates. Uh, yeah, hi. How are you, Amanda? <laughs> Good, yeah. No, tax time is already upon us, so yes. This year has gone so quick, hasn't it? With it's everything crazy. that's been going on in the world, uh, uh, it's been a very unusual 12 oh, months. Of year. Yeah, it, uh, it's just, it's just, uh, everything's just, um, I guess, going fast forward. So yeah. It's, yeah, it's busy, busy, but yes. Well, Amanda is definitely a tax expert, great at what she does. So I asked her to join me today to talk all things tax and preparing for tax time. Yes. Uh, obviously, tax time is coming up really quickly now. There's only a small window of opportunity to really make any changes organized. or get things organised yeah. before 30 June. Absolutely. So today we're going to be covering off on three segments really. We're going to talk about employees, mm -hmm. so people that have a job that work for someone else. We're also going to be talking about self-employed, so business owners. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also going to talk about property investors because yes. um, they're you know three of the main client segments that we focus on at Rise High. Yeah. So, uh, but just before we do, just want to share some exciting news with you. Last night we're at the Mortgage and Finance Awards and we took home the award for best mortgage broking uh, business in South Australia. This is the awesome. fifth time that we've won this award in our 10 years of operations. So we're pretty well happy done. with that. Yes. So um, just some exciting news to share. <laughs> Hot <laughs> off the press. Um, so let's get into it. Mm -hmm. I think let's start with employees first, PAYG. Yes. So what do, employees need to do to start preparing for tax time and are there any things that they can do between now and 30 June to help reduce their tax or get a better tax refund yeah. what should they start thinking about yeah so um, I guess right now you have pretty much only got less than 30 days to get yourself yes. organized so the the key points that we want to kind of make is make sure you have uh, receipts uh, so make sure you have the evidence to be able to claim deductions um, review what, what kind of information you are gathering. So are they, is the expenses incurred in relation to earning that income? Mm. Um, and also um, maybe review what your income has been to see if you need some additional deductions that can ultimately reduce your taxable income and potentially give you that increase in the return of refunds. Because there's been a few things that have changed over the course of the last 12 months. Yep. Like I know that a lot of employees would have gone from um, you, you know, maybe their employer is using a different system now. They might have to log on to their HR system to actually get their group certificate. Yeah. So um, you're not getting group, um, group certificates, uh, physical copies anymore from your employer. Yes. Um, it's now all single touch payroll, so it's all automated. Everything's electronic and basically the information is not going to you at all. It's going directly to the ATO and that information is being fed through. So when you do pre-fills, that all that data is coming through there. So, so is that is if all, they're doing their tax return themselves? Yes, yeah, if they're doing it themselves and doing it through eTax or MyGov, that all that information will be pulled there as well. So yeah. it's all available electronically. Yeah, so and I guess one of the other interesting things about the last 12 months is obviously there were a lot of people working from home yeah. during the COVID period. Absolutely. So. Um, there were some new rules around that. Can you just explain what that looks like for any listeners that were actually working from home during that period? Sure. So with, with obviously working from home and given the COVID restrictions, there's uh, home office expenses were the new kind of um, deduction that's available. So the ATO has provided a predetermined rate of 80 cents uh, per hour. And you basically are saying how many hours you work a week for, at home and then divide, uh, times that by the rate. Um, this can be quite good if you have um, limited deductions or whatever is incurring at home to be able to claim. So we're giving people the option of either A, claiming that rate or B, looking at the office space itself and claiming the home office expenses. So um, what do people need to do to justify the working from home time that they're claiming? Yeah. You know, how does the tax office know, I guess, whether that w they actually were working from home or whether they're just saying they're saying working it. from home. Yeah. Like how, what's it's, the ruling around this? How does it work? Yeah. So basically it's, it's your employment. Uh, so your employer will uh, um, provide you with um, a, a letter to say that you have to work from home because okay. of the circumstances. And then obviously your um, diary evidence. So if you keep a timesheet for work or mm -hmm. your calendar, that's a good um, uh, evidence to be able to provide and substantiate your claim through the ATO. So you just have to give that to your accountant yeah. when you... Uh, 
claiming yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, were there any other changes to tax treatment for individual employees over the last 12 months uh, that were sort of related to COVID? Uh, no, well, not really. Um, I guess that one of the uh, other announcements recent in the budget is the fact that there are 1,080 is going to be rolled over. So uh, all individuals in that threshold will be able to receive that 1,080. They also did, Just explain that again in oh, more it's, detail. It, it's um, a, like a small business tax offset. So it's not yep. a small business, it's individual. So it's a low income and medium income tax offset available So it's an extra $1,000 tax yeah. refund yeah. on top of what they would normally get. Yes, yeah. So, so that's continued. They are looking to obviously remove that altogether, but this year they've announced that it's going to be pushed forward. Um, so taxpayers will receive that benefit, which is the offset and the other announcement that they made is um, that the, um, I guess, um, deductions are available. So with your, they don't want people to do a copy and paste. They have warned yeah. that they don't want people to say, oh, I'm just going to do what I did last year and paste into this year. They are looking at that. So that's another okay. warning that we've received. So just make sure it's adequate, it's mm -hmm. substantiated, and it's um, you've got evidence. And there's been a change to the tax, the income tax rates and the tax brackets. Is that right, mm -hmm. or does that take into to effect next? Yeah, so th that hasn't happened. So this that that was okay. So that's standard. starting. So that's starting the first of next, July. Yeah, okay, yeah. so so the tax the tax rates for this year are, are remaining the same as yeah. what they were on the budget announcement October last year. So, yeah, okay, which is good. Yeah. So one of the great things is that I believe that you're going to be leaving us with a checklist. Yes, yes. So um, yes, I'm And we can have that as a downloadable. So we'll be providing a blog after this Facebook mm -hmm. Live and you'll be able to access Amanda's checklist, yes. which will be super handy. Yes. Thanks for providing that. Yeah, no, that's um, good. And that's definitely a great checklist to use to, you know, get yourself ready for tax time. Tax time. Yeah, definitely. Few shout outs. Hi Sarah, Emily, Fiona, Gary, Colin, Priya, Todd. Thanks for joining us guys. If you've got any questions, any comments, we'd love to hear them. Put them in the comment section below and we'll be answering them live today. I'm here with Amanda and we're talking about um, tax or stuff tax. <laughs> well, uh, we were talking about employees. So are there any uh, other tips or information that you think people that are um, an employee need to know preparing yeah, for so tax? I, I guess for an employee, uh, um, it, it, Things have obviously changed, so you may not be travelling the same as you were last year, so mm -hmm. logbook method may change. Um, so your, your car, motor vehicle deductions may change, so just be okay. aware of it. It's about um, being um, you know, reasonable and what's actually happened in your last 20, yep. 12 months tax year, and then having the evidence to substantiate it. The ATO have also mentioned that tax returns won't be even starting to be processed until the 6th of July, and okay. refunds won't be um, available until the 16th. So Why is that? Yeah, they're just a bit... They just hold off. They okay. really want people to get... Um, their, they're waiting for employees to all um, obviously lodge their wages yeah. paid and they're using that to make sure that all the evidence and all the information's in there before people are being able to lodge their returns. Yeah. It's also about getting the systems up to date and obviously rolling over what the new changes have been with the legislation into the returns. So yeah. every okay, year great. we do have um, a delay in obviously refunds being received yes. um, and so they've announced it's going to be the 16th. So great. Yeah. So it's good to know. Excellent. Um, I think we're going to move on to property investors. Yes. That's okay. No um, that's a bit of a juicier, bigger topic. Mm -hmm. So let's talk property investors because obviously with a property investor, there's a lot more. You mentioned with employees, they need to keep all of their receipts and you know Definitely. records of yeah. everything. That's even same. more true <laughs> with property investors, Absolutely, don't yeah. they? It's, it's, it's exactly the same. The, the theory is if you're going to claim anything, you want to make sure you have the evidence. Um, yes. So yeah, just being mindful of that, you know, if you pay someone cash and don't get a receipt, you can't claim it as a deduction. It's, yeah. it's really important. And what are some of the ways that if, if we do have some property investors tuning in and they'd like to save a bit of money, get a better tax refund, um, what are the, some of the ways that they can do that? Yeah, so with the rental property side of things, it's really looking to maximise your rental property deductions. Yes. Um, so we tend to say, um, brand newer, the newer homes that less than five years old tend to have a higher depreciation rate on the, the building costs. So looking to use the services of a, 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 a quantity surveyor or um, like a depreciation. Yeah, uh, actually, we recently yeah. did a great Facebook Live on depreciation schedules. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't got a depreciation schedule done for your um, 
when property, yeah. definitely check out that video. We'll put a link to that video in the blog. Absolutely. Um, and also some discounts. We've got some relationships with with quantity surveyors that allow yeah. our clients to get discounts yeah. for um, depreciation reports. So that's a really good tip. Yes, so that, um, that's one very good method of, yes. of being able to claim deductions uh, for the rental property. Yeah. Um, we have obviously everyone's felt it, interest rates have decreased. So the, yes. the interest paid on loans have decreased. So that's Which is causing, a good thing. It's, it's a great thing. But, <laughs> but it, it might mean that you pay a bit more tax. <laughs> yes. So it doesn't mean that your rental property losses are as high as they have been in the past. Yes. So it's really important to be aware of that and, yeah. and not be shocked when, you know, my refund's not as big as last year because that's a, a common kind of um, feedback that we receive. And uh, like I say to everybody, every tax time is different and every tax return is different. So yeah. it's about recording what's going on in your circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also um, one of the things that property investors often get confused about is the difference between um, spending money and treating it as repairs and maintenance yes. versus yeah. a capital improvement. Yes. Um, because it's different. It is. And so can you just talk about that and mm -hmm. because I mean there might be some property investors out there thinking oh I'm just going to spend some money on my property in the next few weeks yes. to try and you know ramp up my tax refunds yes. which is not a bad That's strategy yeah, definitely. you know yep. definitely something you should think about um, but not necessarily everything you spend on your property can actually be claimed in that tax yeah, year. 100% so in that year. That's can right. you um, yeah. can you just talk through that with us yeah. just to give people some tips on if they are looking for some you know, quick, quick write-offs. <laughs> yes. Uh, what sort of areas they should be looking at, yeah. and what sort of things would be not not able to be, you know, deducted 100 percent this yeah. year. Yeah. Well, I guess the, the uh, for me the easiest way to explain a repair versus improvement um, is if the repair re reinstates the um, item to its original um, that original look basically so you're restoring it to be what it was originally so that generally is a repair and then if you replace it to improve it so you change the color you change the structure or the texture then that is an improvement and it, we have to claim the cost as a depreciation over the life of the asset so I mean just can I just drill a bit deeper into mm -hmm. that so let's say the oven breaks down yes. and you've got to buy a new oven yes is that a repair that's a replacement that's a replacement yeah. so, so that then is depreciable yes yeah, so if your oven was fixed, so it was broken, it was yeah. fixed, but it wasn't replaced in full, then that's the repair. So if you've got, um, you know, a timber bench top in the kitchen mm -hmm. and that is damaged mm -hmm. and you replace it with a timber bench top, that's yes, a repair. That is a repair. But if you replace it with a marble bench top. Yes, that is an improvement. That is an improvement. Yes, yeah. So yeah. very fine line. It's, it's very, very fine. It's yeah. very fine. Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. And it's really important to make sure that you have that because the ATO are, are hot off the kind of checking mm. if you're claiming over what they expect to be reasonable. Um, and I have a client that received a letter from the ATO saying, you know, your rental expense deductions are a little bit higher than what we'd expect. Do you think this is correct? And, and it is, but it's a matter of going, what, what happened in that year? So yeah, it's important to point out that um, just because it's not 100% claimable in this tax year, yes. You still get to claim 100% of it. It's just, just it's just spread. depreciated yeah. or just spread over multiple yeah, tax absolutely. years yeah. over its useful life. Yeah. So you don't lose the benefit. It's just that you don't gain it all in that one yeah. tax tax year. And in actual fact, it actually helps. I mean, because you're getting that deduction over the a life or over five years instead of um, you know not having anything to claim next year. So yeah. it, it is good to move forward and look into the future to see where your deductions will be then. Yeah, actually. Um, one of the businesses that does depreciation schedules that we recommend, they actually offer a free service of any improvements that you make to the property after they did an depreciation schedule. Awesome. They'll update the depreciation schedule for free. That's good. That's, That's pretty really good, good, isn't yeah, it? That is really good. So Some is that people. something that would be good for people to do that, to get their depreciation schedules updated oh, when they actually yep. um, make improvements, yep. whether it's new oven or new bench top mm -hmm. or addition yeah. like new yeah. you know i think so if, if you can get it without incurring the cost um, and it's something a part of their package that's fantastic yeah um, what we do is obviously we put it into a depreciation schedule on top of their depreciation schedule so yeah we're not losing that information but it is yeah if they were provide that service 100 percent. yeah awesome yeah. so it's i guess it goes without saying that it's super important that for any money that you spend on your property that you are keeping receipts yes absolutely because you obviously can't claim without those receipts exactly so that is super important yeah, yeah. so guys 
garden maintenance is, is a good one. So people obviously like to have good garden um, and, and people like to live you know, somewhere that they like yeah. to look out in the window and have a nice garden. So that, that is an outright deduction. You can get someone to come in and fix your garden or you know, trim the, the hedges and, and that's an outright deduction. So that's something that you can consider. So maybe it doesn't have to be an, a capital asset, but it could yeah. be a repair to the garden or... What about or, painting the house? Painting house? So painting a house, if you paint it the same colour, that's a repair. Okay. Um, so if it's white on white, complete repair. Yeah. If it changes the colour, so if you change it to be blue or uh, you change the whole decor and it's that's brown. So, then isn't that it's, so, that's so funny, isn't it? Yeah. Really? Well, see, <laughs> as far as the ATO is concerned, you're, uh, you're restoring it. So yeah, you are I restoring know. the house to how it was. So and I think that's the biggest part of the key is, is uh, have I restored it or have I improved it? And, that's, and is there a rule about, I mean, my understanding was that there was a rule about the fact that if you, any money that you spent on a property the first year after you purchased it, all of it goes to capital rather than rather than improvements yeah so i, I guess that's the uh, the idea with that would be when it was available for use for rental um so if you purchase a house and then did some um you know renovations on it before it was available for rent then yes all those costs form part of the cost of the property yes but if you were to purchase the house and uh, mark an agent came in started renting and uh, advertising as it as is yeah then any cost that you incur because it is marketed and is it available for rent from then then you can claim your deductions okay so interesting. it's really important to have that i always thought it was a 12 month rule but it's not no. a 12 month rule it's yeah. when uh, at what point when, you make it available yes. for rent yeah definitely yeah, yeah. awesome yeah. that's great um just want to say a shout out to Kristen, Anthony, John, James, Rochelle, Melissa, Sean. Thanks for tuning in, guys. As I said before, please put through your comments or questions. We're here answering your questions live today. And Amanda's a wealth of knowledge, so make sure you take advantage <laughs> of that. So we've spoken about employees. We've spoken about property investors. With property investors, we've talked about depreciation. Mm -hmm. We've talked about repairs versus capital improvements. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've talked about the fact that interest rates on your investment loans are likely to have been lower over the last 12 months, which means that your your losses will be less or your profit will be more if your properties yeah. are positively geared. Yes. So if you are looking to maximise some tax returns on that, there is actually another way that you can go about um, maximising some tax returns if you want to sneak them in this financial year. You can actually pay interest in advance on your loans. Yes, yes. So that's a really interesting way that you can actually pay interest for next year before 30 and June claim. and you can claim it this tax mm -hmm. time. Yes, businesses so, do that, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, like, that, so that's that another thing that you can think about. Now that's really only useful if um, perhaps this year you your income's dropped or, or, or maybe next year your income won't be, yeah. you know, so maybe if you've got a partner who's about to go on maternity leave mm. and, you know, next financial year they won't yeah, have as much income yeah. so their taxable income will be lower and you want to try and get the tax deductions this year when their taxable income's higher, mm. you know, that could be a solution. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Do you see much of that with property investors? Not really with property investments. Um, mainly with, I guess, with the property side, it's about kind of, um, you yeah, know, maximising what they can do. So I guess the important thing with property investors is um, how you've purchased the property. If you yes. split it between your, your husband and wife situation or if you put it into a trust structure, and what kind of circumstances you need to maximise yep. either the depreciate or the deduction side of things against the return, or um, where it's the where the income is going to be um, are ultimately distributed to. So it's really about where what's happening in that year and what's going on. One of the um, tax rules that I think changed recently was in relation to. Uh, if you've got properties interstate, yeah, um, you used to be able to claim the travel yes. to go and see those properties, yes, yeah. um, which you know, sad, which sad was quite day. was quite <laughs> nice. And then they changed that rule. They did tell us about yes, that. So they um, they kind of. Like, I think they clued on that a lot of people were travelling, um, obviously to Queensland to look at their rental properties and and doing the legit side of it to actually look at yeah. the property and maybe do some improvements. And they noticed that it was quite a high amount of deductions being claimed. So they thought, no, we're going to stop it, quash it altogether, so you cannot claim it at all now. So, so there's absolutely no reason why you can claim travel. Nope. Not, not relating to your rental property. Yeah. So you can still claim uh, in travel if you uh, own your own business or work for and an employer going for and business go for purposes. conferences and training, yeah. but definitely not in regards to looking at your lovely 
um, yeah, property Yeah, that Queensland. was a sad day when they made that yeah, change. It was a sad day. <laughs> um, we've got a question that's come through from Bronwyn. My husband and I own an investment property and he pays significantly more tax. How is best to claim deductions through all of his tax or doesn't it matter? Is that so? I'm, so I'm assuming, assuming you're talking about the fact. So your husband obviously would have a higher taxable income than you. Yes. Um, would that come down to the ownership structure of the property in yes. terms of determining how it's all structured? Yeah, yes. So um, it kind of in that kind of scenario, which is a great question um, for spouses or partners that are, have a higher income, and you know the the other spouse has a lower income, we tend to kind of encourage um, tenants in common. Uh, instead of so when you purchase a property you kind of let your conveyancer know that you want to purchase it as tenants in common and you provide a percentage so um, say your husband's got the higher income you want to maximize his deductions from the rental property negative gearing um, we can give him 90% and yourself 10% and that allows us to give him more of the deductions re regarding that rental property um, which is which is quite a common thing to do as well so that's one way you can potentially reduce his tax personally Another obviously factor is looking at his overall, what his works involves and what kind of deductions that you can claim for him to be able to reduce his taxable income. I mean, one of the deductions that we didn't talk about when we talked about employees that um, employees can consider is making a voluntary contribution to super. Absolutely, yeah. You know, that could be a way of actually, you know, putting money into super, which will be good for obviously for your future, but mm -hmm. also actually reduces your taxable income, which means you'll pay less tax. Yeah, so we um, definitely um, encourage that. So with the superannuation contribution, um, voluntary contribution, is it's up to 25,000 in total for the per year. Per person. Per person, and yep. includes what your employer has already paid as well. So it's really important to go speak to your super fund, find out how much money has been actually put into your super yes. fund for that 12 months, and then go, what can I contribute that will uh, not exceed that value, but allow me to get a deduction? But getting back to your question, uh, to the thing about ownership structures, when we're talking um, to Bronwyn about that, the thing about ownership structures is that it's so important to get the right advice about ownership structures before you buy the property yep, because if the property is already owned in a certain structure it's actually quite expensive to change the ownership structure yeah. because you've got to pay stamp duty and capital gains tax yes, again yes. but there is a loophole <laughs> so I'm just going to talk about yeah, yeah, that. Definitely. Um, so if it's an investment property that you're transferring to a, a different ownership structure then obviously a stamp duty and capital gains tax. Mm -hmm. But when you've got a married couple that are living in their own occupied residence, mm -hmm. there is a way that you can transfer ownership between the couple whilst they're living in it as their principal place of residence. Yes. So, so we've, had, we've had some people that mm -hmm. have moved into an investment property to live there and while they're living there, they've changed the ownership structure or perhaps they've got a current home that they've been living in for many years and they know that they're gonna turn it into an investment property and they change the ownership structure before it becomes an investment property. Mm. So we're, we're, I guess when the purpose of the property has changed, it's, it's really good to look at what we wanna do and yep. then change things accordingly. So but it's probably important to look at the ownership structure before the purpose changes. Absolutely, definitely. Because once it becomes an investment property, it's a bit like... Yeah, it, yeah, it, you know, it definitely is really important Unless to you plan that. to move back into it. Yes, yeah. yeah. You, can, you can have um, a rental property. Um, as long as you don't have a main residence, uh, you can actually rent your main residence for up to six years um, and not have any capital gains consequence, provided that you don't have a main residence. So that's very common for um, the grey nomads that tend to take their caravans and go around Australia for 12 months or two years and they rent off their um, house um, so that they are getting a form of income so yeah. by doing that they are allowed to obviously not have to worry about the capital gains tax because it's still their main residence and they actually haven't got any permanent main residence so there's lots of different rules and and kind of things to be aware of and mm. it's just about I guess speaking to the, your, your tax accountant or an advisor finding out the rules and what circumstances are gonna um, be for you guys and then make the decision. So more informed decisions, the better, I guess. Yeah, and so Bronwyn, hopefully that answers your question. I think just to summarize, have a look at what the ownership structure currently is. Is it owned by you and your husband equally as joint tenants? Is it owned as tenants in common with a different percentage of ownership across both of you? Is it owned in a trust? Mm. There's so many different ways it could be owned. Yep. Um, if it's not ideally structured to maximize your family's tax position, then perhaps we need to speak to someone like Amanda who can actually give you some ownership structure advice 
and then you can determine whether you know it is worthwhile to change the ownership structure yeah. Yeah. or whether you do plan to move into it and then and then that potentially opens up possibilities yes. so yeah. um, thanks for the thumbs up glad that you <laughs> if you've got any more questions send them through we'd love to answer them live um, what else do we need to talk about with property investors were there any real like were there any rule changes relating to COVID? No, um, I, I guess with the property side of things, um, we kind of just want to make mention, make sure you have your records. So when you purchase a property, mm. make sure you keep the purchase settlement documents, you have the cost price available. So if you were, obviously the market's really strong at the moment, so people are selling. If you were to sell, you do have a capital gains consequence to you know bring to account. So I just suggest keep all those records uh, current and, and available and, and make sure you have that conversation before you sign on the dotted line to sell your rental property because there are tax consequences that you need to be aware of as well. And it's obviously a really hot market at the moment. So, so hot. you yes. know, buyers are actually, I'm sorry, sellers are getting really good prices mm. um, and buyers are sort of really hot out there, you know, really wanting to soak up properties. Um, it's so important that people keep information about when they purchase the property. Yeah. Things like the settlement statement and the purchase contract, um, you know, things like the documentation that you would have got from the your conveyancer. Yeah, because people don't realise that even if you've owned the property for 20 years, or maybe you've been, you know, it, it's been passed down from a family member or however yeah. the property is, you need to actually um, have records. Have records, <laughs> exactly. don't you? Yeah. It's really important. It's, it doesn't so matter what how happens long it's for been those held. people out there that, you know, maybe they've owned properties for 20, 30 years and they've misplaced the records of, of what oh, they've done? Yes. How, how do you go back and work out the cost base? Uh, so, a really good the uh, real estate agent, so it, the person you're either selling to or um, a real estate agent that you obviously know or, or trust, um, they can do property valuations, but they also can find out the history of the purchases of the properties. So, okay. they can identify what the market value or what it was actually sold for back then. But they um, might be able to identify what it was sold for, but then there's all those the other things and all that, that yes. you wouldn't really be able to determine. No, no. So, unfortunately, I mean, the only real thing you can do is go back to the original agent, if you can remember, and see if they have... If they're still around. Yeah, if they yeah. have the documentation. Otherwise, you could potentially calculate your own stamp duty based on the rates back then. Yeah. Um, that's also a possibility. The key is keep records. Yeah. You, you just have to keep records. And for property investors, particularly those in, uh, that have property in South Australia, I want to touch on, touch on land tax. Yeah. It's obviously not time critical because it's not a 30 June thing, mm. um, but I have noticed that many investors are getting incorrect land tax statements. Yeah. So you this really is a, need to review. Yes. You need to review it, word yes. of warning. And for those property investors that just get their land tax bills sent directly to their property manager, stop that. Call Revenue USA, get them sent to you, or tell your property manager that you want to see it and approve it before they pay it. Yeah. Because Revenue USA are not doing this well. No. And, you know, poor things. They're probably like really under the pump with everything, Absolutely. but they're just making mistakes left, right, and centre. So it's super important that you check that they've actually recorded the right information on your land tax. And the valuation, bill. yeah, definitely. Yeah, before you pay anything, make mm. sure you're checking. Yeah. Are there any other tips that we need to share for property investors or do you think we've pretty much covered it? Oh, I think we've pretty much covered it. I guess the um, the other side, like the type of expenses, maybe we can just quickly run through. So yes. with the rental property, the type of expenses that we would expect to receive, uh, you know, uh, we touched on repairs and potentially capital improvements, your interest, um, bank charges on loans. Um, if you use a property agent, then obviously that cost is also fees, associated yeah. with, yes, rates and taxes, so council rates. Uh, emergency service levy, water, um, and then obviously if you do pest control, they are also um, you know deductions that you can claim against your rental property, um, and then obviously anything else, advertising if you have to advertise mm -hmm. at available rent, um, and if you get a depreciation schedule, you can absolutely. claim the fee for doing that. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So those are the types of things that you want to kind of keep uh, keep a record of and just make be mindful. I tend to say to my clients, if you spend any money on the property, put it in an envelope, put it aside, yes. put it on a file, keep it record, keep it available and just um, have it ready for the 30th of June. Absolutely. Yeah. Good advice. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's move on to business owners. Yes. Um, because what do, what do business owners need to do? I mean, once again, like employees, like property investors, they need to keep really good records. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, hopefully they've been you're doing a bit of bookkeeping throughout the year, especially those that 
yeah, have are registered for GST mm -hmm, and would be, have been doing their BAS statements. Yeah. But if there are self-employed people tuning in today that want to actually decrease their profits and increase their tax deductions mm -hmm. between now and 30 June, what are some hot tips you can give them? Yeah, so I guess at the moment we're uh, doing tax planning for our clients. Um, it's really important to kind of do a review on what your income and profit has been for the year and then look at what kind of deductions that you can bring forward uh, before the 30th of June. So uh, really important, if your income is higher, which everyone's experiencing potentially because of um, the job keeper that was received, uh, it's just a matter of reviewing what your profit and then going, what, what can we do to minimise it? So you can postpone if you're on a cruise basis, which means that you invoice, your, you do your invoices but don't necessarily receive the money. If you're reporting on an accruals basis, then you postpone sending any more invoices to clients until the 1st of July. That postpones income and it postpones what we have to declare for this year, which kind of can help. So the simply line. the timing of the invoices exactly. can actually um, help with your tax management. Yes, yes definitely. Yeah. Uh, and as far as expenses are concerned, it's really important, obviously, to make sure with super, super is paid for your employees before the 30th of June to be able to claim that deduction. And I guess on the topic of super as well, you know, many business owners in Australia don't actually have superannuation mm -hmm. or don't have very much superannuation. So actually uh, making a voluntary contribution to super, yep, whether it be a retail fund or a self-managed super fund, yeah, could be a way have. of reducing taxable yes. income as well. Yes, definitely. Um, I, I don't know if you know, but the budget announcement um, recently said that basically anyone, they, they're, they're abolishing the 400, uh, 450 per month. So anyone that receives any wages is going to get super. Um, oh, they're abolishing pay, that? Yeah, they're when abolishing. does that get abolished? First of July. So, First of July. So yes. regardless of how much you work, you get paid you super. Get paid super yes. And the super, um, the super guarantee rate is increasing as of the 10%. 1st of July to 10%. So every... Every Australian employee gets a pay rise yes. as of 1st of July. Yes, yes. Um, and, and it is... Uh, good it for is, employees. It is good for employees and it's great. Obviously, they're working to make sure that people have enough super in the long term. But unfortunately, it, it does mean there's extra costs for businesses that have to incur it. It is something that has been announced and will progressively go up to 12%. So yeah. it's something that we need to be aware of. And, and it's you know, important for cash flow as well to make sure that you're aware that on the 1st of July, you have to start paying 10%. Um, so that's the kind of the major changes as far as, as super is concerned with uh, employees. I guess um, for businesses, make sure your payroll's up to date. Um, do not lodge your single touch payroll to the ATO until you've reviewed and reconciled your wages. Um, made sure you're happy with it and it all kind of um, is, is all not out of balance. You want to make sure everything's accurate and um, correct, especially for employees as well as the overall, what you've declared to the ATO throughout the year before you lodge it with the ATO. Because yep. that information obviously streams to So when you employee. say you want a reconciler, are you just basically talking about reconciling what's in your accounting software to actually physically what left your bank account? Uh, well, no, you do that throughout the year through yep. your, um, your bank reconciliations. I'm pretty much saying your profit and loss summarises your um, wages that have mm -hmm. been paid and your super that has been paid. To be able to reconcile that, you want to reconcile it to your payroll reports, which is a separate report in your system. And you want to make sure that those two match up and that you have nothing outstanding in your wage payable account before you process and finalise your year end pays. Okay. It's really important to do that with super, um, with also wages, and then obviously before you do your work cover reconciliation as well, which is due at the end of the year. Yeah. And, um, We've had a question come through from Emily because we were, you like you have been talking about the accrual method mm -hmm. and what you can do in terms of uh, amending the dates of invoices and when you actually send them out. Mm -hmm. um, what about if your business runs on a, or is recording on a cash basis? So cash basis, unfortunately, you're restricted as far as what you can do with um, your income coming in. So people will pay. When they, when they pay. Yes, so they can get the I guess you, I guess you could always call your customers and ask them to delay their payment. <laughs> if you're really close to them, yes. <laughs> it's now, like, could you just pay me? I'm sure the customers wouldn't mind paying they, a few, they few weeks later. <laughs> so generally, they, they probably be saying, no, we kind of want our deduction, but you know, it, it is a catch free issue. So I guess in regards to a cash basis, it's a matter of what you pay. So if you can pay out, um, um, you know, prepaid interest or prepaid insurance. Yeah, so that's things where like things that like bringing forward your bringing interest forward. expense. Yeah. So if you want to consider that option, you really need to speak to mortgage brokers like us 
to actually get an interest and advance facility set up really quickly. Yeah. Um, and you need to get onto that ASAP. And also rent. So speak to your landlord. Can you pay some rent in advance? Oh, that's um, a good one. Kind of, you know, and, that, and that will obviously increase your expenses, reduce your profit. And it's all legit kind of ways of doing um, a minimization strategy. So, yeah, yeah, so um, how... How much rent in advance can you pay? Um, is it unlimited or? No, it's, it would be a 12 months. 12 um, months of rent. depending on your landlord, it might be six months, but yeah, yeah it'd be maximum of 12 months. So you just pay that as a lump sum yes. instead of actually paying it week by week yes. or month by month yeah. or whatever your situation yeah. is. Yeah. Apart from your interest expense on your loans and your rent expense, are there any other expenses you can pay in advance legitimately? Well, we have a lot of um, farming clients, so they tend okay. to buy fertilizer and sprays in advance, chemicals. So I guess as far as businesses, if you know that you incur cost, um, so you have to have materials ready and available, you can probably go, well, we can potentially buy those materials in advance this year and have them sitting there ready for our clients next year. So it's stock items as well. So if yep. you have you know, sell specific items to clients, increasing that stock item can also help. So And the amount that you can spend on large items like cars or furniture or equipment mm -hmm. um, and have them all <coughs> expensed in the tax year that that's changed Still, with COVID as well hasn't yeah, it yes. what, what's so, the ruling around that so that's the small business instant write-off rules which mm -hmm. is basically up to 150,000 so, so basically you can spend up to 150,000 on one item one item yes and normally that would be depreciable mm -hmm. but in the current environment the rules are that you get to claim it in the one tax year. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's um, pretty good. Yeah. So it used to be um, it used to three, over 300 and then it used to be um, 25,000, then 30,000 and now 150,000. So, so if you needed to get a private jet to <laughs> visit your clients. <laughs> um, yeah, you you, if it's less than 150,000, definitely. As yeah. long as you take me for a ride. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the only thing I really want to make mention of that is the luxury car tax limit still uh, is applicable. So yes. even if so you So where does buy, that apply? How much is that luxury car limit? So at the moment, it's um, it was 57,000, okay. um, but it's increased because of the fuel efficiency side of things to 63,000. So really make sure that you're not over, you know, claiming over that threshold because um, a car is obviously um, anything over 100, well, 150,000 for a car, it is a luxury car. So, so if you're buying a car that's less than 60,000, there's no luxury tax no. and it's just 100% claimable yeah. in yeah. in the current financial year. When does that end? Does that end? There's, they have post, uh, extended it to the end of next year, so the 30th okay. of June. So you've got year. this financial got this year, year and next financial yes. year to take advantage of that. Yes, absolutely. Um, we've had another question come through from Emily about um, a big super contribution. Mm -hmm. um, if, you know, if an owner, I'm not actually sure what the question is. Um, if an owner's actually wanting to yeah, so make if, a super if contribution. That, that what could be uh, their yeah. limits are the same as as what you said, Correct. the twenty five thousand, yes, isn't it? Yeah. So if they're the, a director that has, um, yes. So if they're on a, um, a director or a, um, a business owner on a trust and receive distributions um, or profits from a partnership or trust, they can actually put money into super up to the twenty five thousand. Yes. Uh, yes, cash uh, the cash um, uh, cash basis is a good idea because it's cash being paid. So anything you're spending now will help with your bottom line in the future. Yeah, and um, I guess um, we've touched on ownership structures for property investors, but I want to touch on that for business owners mm -hmm. because. There's been some changes to the tax rate of companies yes. in recent years, yes. where the, the company tax rate's actually gone down quite a bit. What yeah. is it? At yeah. 27 it's, it was 27 and a half. It's 27 going down to 26, and it'll go down to 25. Right. So, so that's actually cheaper than what a lot of individuals pay. individuals pay. Yeah, um, and you know, we we often see that a lot of businesses, especially mum and dad businesses or family businesses, can be run in family t uh, trust structures. Yes. Yep. So. Is this actually this you know tax reduction for companies? Is this something that companies should actually be or businesses should be considering whether their ownership structure is the right one for them? Yeah. If they're currently operating under discretionary trust, should they be considering changing their ownership structure to a company, to company. structure? Yeah. To actually Definitely. you know I mean, but then again you're missing out on the tax-free threshold yes. so it's a really like it, fine balance it really so, is and it's about I guess it's about looking at your current circumstances and what's going on a family trust structure is really really good if you have family to distribute to so yes. it's you know some people have you know four kids that are all over the age of 18 it's perfect you can yeah you know, maximize that um, 
the tax-free threshold and give 18,000 without having a tax over four people. So it really depends on the circumstances and, and your family environment to be able to go, this is still a good a good idea for you or no, maybe we should go to a company structure. So yeah, really okay. important to have that discussion. And, and how easy is it to transfer from structure to structure with a business? I mean, we know that with property investment, it's expensive. Mm. What is the scenario with business? So let's say, for example, we've got some self-employed business owners that are wanting to change from you know, a trust sole structure trader. to a, or sole trader yeah. to a company yeah. or trust, cause trust structure to a company. company. Mm -hmm. um, what, what would be involved in that and what are the costs that people need to consider? Yeah, so I, with, with the, currently I've just gone through the same kind of scenario for a client. Um, so she was a sole trader, you know, income going well, looking to, you know, potentially sell the business in, a, in five years time. So if, you, if, you, if that's the scenario as well, you need to really separate it from yourself personally. So it's an item that can be sold by itself. So we tra transferred over from sole trader to company. It, there are rollover reliefs available, so there's no capital gains tax. There's nothing you know mm -hmm. having to be paid because it's basically an asset rolling from one to another, um, and that kind of the the cost of setting up a company is around a thousand dollars plus GST, and, and you, you kind of that includes your ASIC fees and um, and so all So it's the not lines. that hard to change ownership. No, not at all. And what about changing ownership back and forth? So you, you bought the example of uh, mum and dad that have four children over yeah. the 18, mm -hmm. you know, which is great for a trust because yes. they've got lots of people to distribute to. Um, what if it's a mum and dad that have four children that are under the age of 10, where, you know, they're not going to have uh, adult children to distribute to for, for a while? For a while. Yes. Um, you know, could they change to a company now while they've got young children and then once their children are older, they could change back to a trust? Like, how easy is it to... To, to you know, to manoeuvre the. Um, it, there, I guess there are restrictions. And so I mean, I get with with sole trader, the the ownership remains the same. So nothing's changed. It's the individuals, the sole trader. It's the individual that the director. So ownership hasn't changed. Yeah. Um, and and that is what allows us to be able to roll over. So I guess as far as a trust to a company, as long as the trustee is the same entity or same owner of the new company, then we can roll over. So um, when you say that the trustee is the same owner, does that mean that if it's an individual trustee, that person needs to be the director yes, of the company? Correct. Or if it's a corporate trustee, that director, then yeah. that director has to be. If yeah. you've got a corporate trustee, would you that can, corporate trustee just become the company? You can potentially do that. Yeah, yeah, that is no problems at all. Yeah, it's just a matter of obviously updating the constitution to be able to reflect that it's a trading entity and not a trustee company. Yeah. yeah. But that's definitely an idea as well. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, ownership structure advice is really important when you run a business as well. Mm. Um, we could talk for hours about this topic, but we think we're running out, running out of time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, just flown. to sort of summarise um, for business owners, do you have any other tax tips that you want to share with business owners that we haven't already covered? Oh, I think just the important thing is um, be up to date, be aware of what's going on and really look at your profit now because when the 30th of June comes, you, you've got no chances of changing it. So maybe just have a look at your profit and loss now. If you're happy with it, you reckon you've paid enough tax, great. If you're not, maybe get in contact with your accountant and, and have a conversation. Yeah, uh, it's a great idea. And if, of course, you know, anytime you have any questions about money, finance, property, the team at Rise High would love to help you, um, and we can definitely point you in the right direction of people, wonderful people like Amanda that can help answer absolutely um, really specific questions about tax. So, thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. We'll see you again next time, and good luck preparing for your uh, end of tax year. Yes, okay. tax time. Bye. <laughs> see ya.